Welcome back to the Bytes number 1 series in which I try to build a CW transceiver. So previously I've done uh, three videos, 3, 6, and 7. They're about different parts of the radio and in this case a full receiver, which didn't work very well but it was a, a good learning process anyhow. Then we moved into part 0 of Bytes number 1 and that was an intro to CW transceiver. That was like a black diagram almost of the receiver. It was direct conversion. Uh, part 1, here we are. We've got the this thing built up, and that still continues to be very useful. Part two is figuring out the code for that thing up there. Part three was an AF amp, and here we are at part four. So I'm going to build a mixer, but this is a very, very good lead-in to the BitX project. And I'll introduce the BitX project shortly, but uh, I think that's what we're going to try to aim to build. Part five is going to be hopefully assembling this thing, and part six, who knows. All right, so let's get into looking at the circuit and maybe an intro to the BitX project. So here are the schematics for the BitX uh, transceiver. Here's an older version of the schematic, and I think these are actually about 90% similar. But uh, both of these were developed by a guy named Ashar Faran, and the link to his website is right there. Uh, I think his call sign is VU2ESE, uh, India. And he designed these, and I think they're open source as of currently. Uh, the code, at least for the DDS, is open source, so I know that much. But let's go ahead and take a look at the newer schematic, because I think it's much, much more clear. So I've actually built up quite a few of these parts already, and all we're going to do, uh, the last part of it, is, is this single balance mixer that I haven't built yet, so this would be the focus of this video after I go through kind of the schematic. So the BitX has been a very, very popular homebrew type of transceiver, and it's withstood the test of many pe many people trying to build this thing. So I think this is a very good point, uh, starting point for me to build something like this. So off in the lower right hand corner, right there, we've got the antenna jack. And that's where the signal comes in from over the air. Now you follow that wire down, I've highlighted it all in yellow. This is the receive path. This is, uh, just notice, we've got an RX and TX, to so receive and transmit. And there's a switch from the uh, push to talk. Uh, for which power you want to uh, power. So you can either select from 12 volts going to the receive chain or 12 volts going to the transmit chain, not both. And this is actually quite important as we get to the next couple segments. So first thing we hit is a filter here. I believe this is a low pass filter, but someone check me on that. And the signal gets filtered down uh, 20 meters, so it should be now in the 14 megahertz range once you hit this uh, amplifier here. Now on this design, this amplifier is cloned two more times, and I've built these up and I've tested this on the box over there, and they produce about 14 decibel of gain uh, going this way at 20 meters. And I believe the testing frequency was 14030, if that matters. So this amplifier, people have given it a name, just the BitHex amplifier, it's been very good. And uh, people have been using the same design over and over again which has been fantastic because then you get a lot of resources saying, you know, here's what to do, here's what not to do. And you Google that and you'll find there's actually a groups.io uh, uh, website group for uh, the BitX20. And this is one of the topics there. So the signal comes in here, gets amplified by 14 decibels, and it goes through a double balance diode ring mixer. The other part of the signal, so diode ring mixers take the frequency, in this case 14 megahertz, and it converts it into an intermediate frequency, in this case 12 megahertz. And the intermediate frequency is going to be much easier to kind of uh, amplify and filter and all that stuff. And that's because you don't have to tune the entire circuit for you to be able to filter and things like that if you just make an IF section. And if you skip the IF section like that, then you would have to tune the amplifier, you have to tune everything else as you tune the frequency up and down. So this is kind of a really nice parking point for a frequency. So you can just tune this section if you need to mess with anything. All right, so we've got 12 megahertz and the other signal mixing it down. So this gives you the sum and differences of frequency. So 14 going in here, and we've got some mystery frequency going in here to make 12. So that's going to be 2 megahertz and, you know, a bit to get the difference if you want it that way. So that gets in here, gets filtered a bit, amplified, and there's a resistor pad there. And then we reach this section here, which is a single balance mixer. 
this is the part I still have to build. And this is the one I'll build in this video. But the signal that drives the other side comes from here, the 12 megahertz uh, crystal oscillator. Now I don't have any 12 megahertz crystals, but I do have a lot of 80 meter crystals, so I think I'll be using those. And then there could be some issues with uh, the multiple of 80 meters being 20 meters, but I think it's actually far enough apart that we're okay. But we'll see how that goes in a second, I suppose. So after this, we're down in audio frequency. So this is something you can hear now, this wire, if you tap into it, it's going to be very low level signal, an audio signal. Right, you follow it down and around, and you hit a preamp right here for the LM386, which is going to be your audio power amplifier. And at the very end of the chain, you dump all that power into your speakers or headphones. So what I've done is, over the past month and years, and the past videos, built up some of these uh, little sections here. The filter you may recognize, and for those of you uh, who watch that, you've noticed that I've actually put together a 5-pin header for this instead of a 3-pin header, and I did that earlier today. And that's to match with the current protocol that I've got around. 5 pins, the leftmost one is power, then ground, signal, ground, and then a miscellaneous like extra data carrier if that is necessary, but that can be uh, not connected to anything for the most part. So, starting with a, the filter, I don't have that yet, but this is actually a 14 megahertz bandpass filter that I built up from uh, some other website. And I was very, very close. I'm about 300 kilohertz too high on the filter, so the center frequency is way too high. And so, you know, the trimmer caps don't trim it enough. And so I have to probably go and rebuild this and rewind the coil, which is going to be an absolute pain. So I'll set that aside for now. Now we hit the amplifier, and I've got several of these. Let's see, this is one of the BitX amplifiers. This represents just the top portion of the circuit, so right here. Signal goes in this way, signal comes out of these headers over here. Next is the double balanced uh, mixer, which I've got a couple of actually. Because I built these up, and they didn't work. But they actually did work, so I built some more, and this still didn't work, but they actually did work, so I built another one. So moving on from the mixer now, we've got another BitX amp, which I've got another one here. The crystal ladder filter is here. This is for 3.56 megahertz, not 12, so we can adjust accordingly. Next, we've got another BitX amp, but I've only uh, built up a double amp this time double not this way, but double this way. So I've got back to back, one amplifier, another amplifier put onto this board for a little bit extra gain. But I can build an extra single section if necessary. All right, but I've got a double one here. This is the mixer I want to build in this video, which I haven't gotten to yet. At this point, this is going to be audio frequency. So anything on this wire is going to be very low level audio signal. And then there's the preamp that drives the 386. And I think I built this up over, yeah, it's right here, on the breadboard, actually. And if you turn it this way, it, it matches up almost perfectly to the schematic. So we've got the uh, transistor right here. The coupling cap is, where is it? Somewhere down here. The trimmer pot is over here for the volume control. And then the 386 is to the left of that right here. And the output of that goes to the speaker, uh, 3 watts, and there you have it. So I've actually got a lot of this already put together, and this is the last part of it. So I might as well just uh, put this together and see if I can chain everything up together and make it all work. So let's get into it. Alright, here's everything I need. Uh, first. Two diodes, one and four one four eight small signal diodes would do just fine. First step is to find two that match in voltage drop, so I'll do that in a second. Now the hardest to find component is going to be this, FT3743. Uh, these are really rare because I don't think anybody uh, on eBay sells them for a reasonable price, but you do a little bit of digging and you find yourself a good deal. Right, so I got some of these. Uh, 100 ohm pot for the balance control up here and then we've also got uh, some wire 
Uh, you can tell this is from a transformer that I just unwound. And that's for winding these coils right there. Now there are no instructions for winding the coil here, but if you look at the website, uh, if you dig around a little bit, there are instructions. So, oh, there's also a capacitor, but I don't know if that counts. So I'll, I'll find a capacitor too. But that's all we need. Uh, let's start by looking at diodes. All right, let's take a short break and actually admire some of these Harbor Freight multigators. Now, all these are completely different, which is interesting. None of these two are identical. In fact, this one here, I've got the manual for it still, has a backlight button. That you never saw that one before. And this is the one I got yesterday, which is completely different packing, and the Sentac is all gone, like the branding is all gone. So that one's kind of interesting. But I'll do a completely separate videos on kind of these and how good they are, I suppose. But I was taking one out to uh, test the diode, and it reminded me that I have all the other Sentac instruments here. All right, here we are. Everything is on the table now. So I've got the negative lead hooked up right there to this clip, and the positive lead is right here. So we just kind of shuffle them up a little bit, you know, see if we get lucky and find two that are the same on the first try. So I'll take a pair and I'll clip both of the negative ends into the clip. And I'll go here. That says 623. And that says 624. So we could do a little bit better. Let's remember that. That will, there you go, 23, 24, and we keep going. So I'll take another two, I'll put them both in the clip, and that says 618, and that one is 618. So these are both lower than those, so 618 is good. Now let's see if we can do any better than 618 anywhere. Right, so I'll give it maybe three tries if I don't get any better than 618. Yeah, that's that's higher than 618, so forget that one. And here are my two other tries. What's that one say? 629, that's high. 622, that's also high, so I think I got pretty lucky this time with two 618s. So that's 618 millivolts drop across the uh, diode there. All right, so I'll take these two, I'll shove the rest back in the bag, and we'll continue with the mixer. So here's the coil we have to wind. This is uh, on an FT3743 ferrite toroid. Now, these toroids are sometimes really difficult to find. Uh, if you look at eBay, they're going to be very, very much overpriced, on the order of, you know, one or two dollars each, which is ridiculous. But if you dig around a little bit online, you should be able to find them. So. This coil is supposed to be tri-file around, which means you take three separate pieces of wire and bundle them all together. And then as a bundle, you wind them through the toroid. So you can either take a permanent marker and mark each of these wires differently, or just do what I do, right? Take the wires and make them all different lengths. So you've got a really long one, a medium length one, and a short one. And make sure it's the same on the other end. And then give it a half a twist on one end and you can start braiding this or you can do something a little bit smarter and take a drill and put the wires well the twisted end of the wires through the chuck and it doesn't have to clip in the middle but just somewhere uh, so it's clipped it's good right so just like that this is a twisted end and, and when you stretch it out you want to try to make sure that the other ends you can still see there's a long piece, a medium piece, and a really short piece, so you know which one's which. And then, you just stretch the wire out, and you can pull the trigger. So a couple of turns per inch is good, so I've done a little bit extra here, but the idea is that they all get twisted together into one single wire that's braided. Alright, and to wind a toroid, pretty simple. You start with poking a wire through the toroid. And making the first turn is the most important. You don't want this to be too short or too long. 
So we give ourselves a little bit of slack. I'm holding it with my left hand. So I want to wind this way counterclockwise around the toroid. So there is our first turn here. And actually sometimes it's easier if you flip this over like this and take the first turn like that. So that you're poking the wire through the toroid, not out from behind it. So there we go, we just poke the wire through uh, as the first turn. And one thing to notice is I've only put the wire through the toroid once, but I've already got two turns on here. There's two turns here because the wire goes to the center twice. Right, once going from here in, and the second time is the one I just made. So there's actually two turns on there. So this is a 10 turn toroid, and it should be pretty quick and easy. So uh, let's just go around the circle and do this nine more times. All right, so it doesn't have to be the prettiest work you've ever done, but uh, just make sure the turns on there are correct. So let's count that one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so I need a piece of board that's actually a little bit bigger than this because this doesn't allow for me um, to have headers on the IF input hole, and you just go snip. And you get yourself, you know, a reasonable cut, not the best, but... Alright, so you can see that on this side, I put a, a black mark on the toroid. And on the other side, I left it blank. And the black mark is going to match up with the black marks I have here, so it's all on the same side of the toroid. So whenever you're connecting a, a coil across something, you're going to have one wire from this bunch, and one wire from this bunch. So by marking this, you can tell which side is which. Here's the test setup I've got. So the power supply is up here connected to this white cord and the white cord plugs into this other module here. This other module is simply a scope probe holder. So you clip it onto the wire that sticks out and it makes a solid connection without any dangly wires hanging around. And then here's the mixer we just built and we need a local oscillator here. In this case I've got a uh, 3.56 megahertz crystal with the transistor as an oscillator and all the rest of the stuff is SMD in the bottom. I haven't installed that one capacitor yet, uh, this one, uh, but I can do that as an SMD part on the bottom if I really want to do it later. And this board is the same as this one, it's just another uh, probe holder. So this is the input, that is the output, and that's our local oscillator once again. So input, output, input, output, input, output, okay? We're gonna head over to the machine and we'll take a look at this again. Alright, so here I've got the HP8922 and this is a machine that has a spectrum analyzer portion to it. So the circuit is hooked up right above the machine and maybe you can see that right there. Alright, and this is the peak that the oscillator is generating. It's at 3.56 MHz ish. Uh, it's a little bit off because this machine is not designed to run anything below 10 MHz. And in fact, this machine actually doesn't like you to change your frequency at all. And you could type in anything under 10 megahertz, like 7 megahertz. It's not going to change that, so it doesn't like that. But I found a trick to get it to go down to uh, 3 megahertz, which is kind of cool. I'll, I'll have to do that in a separate video. But idea is we have a peek at the oscillator. Okay? And I'm going to generate a frequency on this machine. Uh, let's just go to 150 megahertz. 
So there we go. Now the center is 150 megahertz. There's nothing there. I'm going to hop over to RF generator. That's already set at 150 for me. And amplitude, let's bump it up to, say, 0 uh, dBm. And bam, there you see a peak. What you also see is two other peaks next to it. All right, so this is 150 megahertz. We are at 8 megahertz window all the way across. And so this is just about 4 megahertz, uh, 154, and this is 146 on this side. So if we take a look, um, let's hop over to the marker menu and go marker to peak. So that's 150. Let's go next peak. And it's 153.557692. So this is essentially 153 megahertz, or 150 megahertz plus 3.56 megahertz from the crystal. And this is going to be 150 megahertz minus 3.56 megahertz. You hop over and that's 146.44 somewhere or other. So there you go. That's what the mixer is supposed to do. It gives you the sum and difference of the frequencies. In this case, 150 plus 3.56 and 150 minus 3.56. All right. So now we've verified that this mixer is working. So why did I pick the frequency 150 megahertz, right? Why not anything else? Well, this mixer is supposed to work for any other frequency as well. But the issue is, if we head back to the main control, I'm going to jump down to, let's uh, make a signal, let's say 15 megahertz. How about that? So let's jump down to 15 megahertz, and I'll make an adjustment here to 15 megahertz. And what you see is a whole bunch of other gunk that pops up, um, and that just confuses everything. So I just thought, you know, higher frequency would be easier to see. But here, you can see that the same thing happens, right? 15 megahertz is right in the middle, and then if I hop over to the marker menu and I hit, uh, well, that's on peak already, but next peak. Well, it's going to do all sorts of stuff for it gets to the 15 megahertz, right? And at 15 megahertz, we're going to go to the next big peak. And that's 18.56 megahertz, which is 15 plus 3.56. And that's uh, 15 minus 3.56. So now we know that this mixer is going to work at both pretty high frequencies, like um, you know up in VHF, and also down here in HF. Very nice. So next thing we have to do is to actually put the circuit together, and that's going to be hopefully done in the next video. But that's it for this video. Um, we verified that this mixer works, which is very good. And hopefully I'll have all the parts together for the BIDEX receiver uh, next time around. So, till next video, see ya.